Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well and having a fantastic week. In today's video, I am doing like an unboxing of some new bits and pieces I've got for the flock. Now, I want to give a disclaimer before I start this that I am fully aware of the cost of living crisis and I was in two minds about making this video, but I put a poll out on Instagram asking people what they thought because I don't want to be insensitive. We are absolutely feeling the cost of living crisis and it's tricky, um, but equally the birds do often need new things and I do allocate budgets for the birds so they never go without. Um, but yeah, I asked you guys and pretty much everybody said that they wanted to see this video. So um, yeah, I'm making this today. I hope you enjoy seeing some of the new products that are out there, some things I've bought previously. Um, and most of it is from Northern Parrots, but I also did an order from Polly's Natural Parrot Boutique and I've got lots of different things because I'm making Making, um, a new batch of dry mix we're completely out now we've got seven birds the dry mix needs to be bulked out a bit I need to make more of it and add new things as well so I'm going to show you some of the bits we've got um, but I hope you enjoy this video so I'll do the northern parrots bits first because that's like the bulk of everything and they have some um, new toys which were kind of exclusively revealed in their newsletter so I couldn't resist and they had a little offer on so we love a bargain um, so I've got these bits here they should probably will be on the website by the time this is up otherwise just keep an eye out on the um, new products tab the first one is this cute little what's it called uh, rainbow disco ball Bauble parrot toy, <laughs> a bit of a mouthful. Love the colours on this, it's just tissue paper um, with some sort of ball inside. Um, I don't think it's, yeah, I think it's like cardboard. So that's cool and it's on like a sizzle string. Um, I think this looks really fun. You could probably, if you wanted to like make a hole in it, you could hide treats in it, and make it into like a little pinata. Um, I love the colours. I'm not sure who's gonna like this the most. Maybe Scampy or uh, Kipling and Louie, but as you probably know from watching my other videos, all the toys get rotated, so I don't just buy a toy for a certain bird, they all get to have a go, but sometimes there are toys that I know some birds are going to like more than others. And then we've got this amazing toy, I am actually going to uh, remove the plastic like dummy thing there and the bead and whatever you call that, because we don't like plastic in the cages. But this is kind of like an ice cream cone. This one is called the Triple Dip Parrot Toy. So it's got these rattan balls and this like rattan cone type thing with lots of crinkle paper in there. Great foraging toy. It just looks like a lot of fun and very easy to climb all over with the wicker uh, range like this. It's like a little ladder. So again, I'm not sure if he's going to like this. Maybe again, Kip and Lou, possibly even Olive as well will like this one. But we'll see uh, what they think and I'll let you guys know. Next I have these absolutely huge seagrass mats. Now the reason that I got these is um, with Kipking and Louie coming in they are not so keen on Pickles and Scampi and they can see Pickles and Scampi where they're kind of positioned in the room and there's nowhere else to put them where they wouldn't see Pickles and Scampi. So I thought about getting this and just putting it on the side where they can see them just as more of like a visual barrier. Um, they're not like super stressed out of it but sometimes Kipling gets a bit obsessive. Uh, crimson bellies are really interesting birds and they are basically like mini cockatoos. So um, once we get to know him a little bit better I will be making videos about crimson bellied conyers. But he is a handful so I've got this just to kind of chill them out a little bit so they don't see pickles and scampi as much but also you know once they're over that kind of thing and they're a bit more chill about everything I can use these for um, toys and you know busy mats activity walls whatever you want to call them so uh, dual purpose and I haven't actually been able to find seagrass mats let alone ones this big in the UK so it's awesome that Northern Parrots do it can't the price, maybe seven, eight pounds, which isn't bad for a really, really big, I think the camera doesn't really do it justice, it's huge. Um, and I've got two of them, so that's gonna be really handy for making some activity walls once they kind of serve their purpose of being like a little visual barrier. And I will be mindful of hormones as well because it's a possibility it might kind of trigger a hormonal response, but we're just gonna go with it and see what happens. And then the other two new kind of toys that I got from Northern Parrots, this one is called the Shredding Pouch Chewable Foraging Parrot Toy Small. Um, so this is a really cute uh, palm leaf little pouch. It's got a tissue paper string coming out of it and some little um, stars on there. And I think this would be really awesome for Olive. She kind of has a love-hate relationship with pouch type toys. She loves to destroy them, which is awesome because a toy that's being destroyed is one that is a successful toy. So I think she'll enjoy this as it is. Again, if we wanted to, we could hide treats in there, but you don't always have to hide treats in order to encourage your bird to play with toys. And I'm pretty sure she's probably gonna have a lot of fun shredding this one. The other um, new toy I've got, and there's quite a lot in the range, but these are the ones that I thought would work best for our birds, is the Naturals Woodland Harvest Parrot Toy. This is pretty big. 
I think that chip and fish are gonna like this the most. So this is like, I think it's like sea grass or some kind of like grass basically, like firm grass. And they really enjoy this material and you can, again, hide treats in there or they can just kind of play with it and preen it. They've had something similar before, which I'm gonna show you in a second, um, but I think they're gonna quite enjoy this one. The bamboo in the middle is a bit hard for them. They probably wouldn't chew it, but I reckon Kipling's beak could probably get through that very easily. And speaking of what they have had before that's similar, it's these uh, from Super Bird Creations. It's basically some little, um, what they're called, Grand Junction apparently. Um, basically little toys, uh, little foot toys, and these are just made up of little grasses in bundles. Um, so these are really fun, they love playing with them on the floor and just absolutely shredding them to bits. I've had these two before, I haven't had these ones, um, but again I think chip and fish will probably enjoy these quite a lot. But we also have foot toys and stuff when they're having their out of cage time and we kind of set up a whole little uh, player for everyone, so um, they'll come in handy for that too. Next up we've got a couple of basics, we've got some millets, this is the millet we always get, the Vitacraft one, um, I just think it's the best quality that I've found um, and it's just easy to get hold of so that's the one we've been buying since Chip and Fish were babies and uh, we also got uh, pumpkin seeds in the shell now it's impossible to find these anywhere else uh, so Northern Parrots has got my back um, but Chip and Fish love these everyone kind of loves these and it's just fun to put in the uh, dry mix that I do because the birds don't seem to like pumpkin seeds when they're out of the shell, but they really love them in the shell. So I'm glad that I picked these up because they're gonna go down a treat. And obviously when it is like pumpkin season, I always make sure I get a couple of pumpkins to have the seeds from and I pre uh, prepare them for the birds. Uh, we always try and get like butternut squash throughout the year and stuff, but it's just nice to have them dried and safely to put in into the whole dry mix. So I haven't made bird bread in a while, so I thought I would try the Topps uh, Blueberry Burst uh, bread mix. <laughs> I can't get my words out today. Um, I don't really cook for my birds. I don't recommend cooking for your birds at all. They don't need cooked food. The only things I do cook for my birds are the occasional scrambled, like plain scrambled egg or plain boiled egg, especially when they're molting, they'll have it like once a week or bird bread, which is occasional. Again, it's like part of like an evening meal. Uh, and when you make this, you can freeze it after it's been cooked and cooled down. So you have some in the freezer for when you need it. Um, but anything other than that, I don't cook for my birds. They don't need it. They're all on like a raw whole food, natural diet. Um, so we wanted to give the bird bread a go. This looks like a lot of fun. And uh, tops is the pellet that I recommend if you're going to feed any kind of pellet at all. Again, we talk about this all the time. Um, we don't feed pellets as the main part of our birds diet, but if we do include it, then we use tops. Speaking of which, <laughs> we actually got um, just a small bag of the mini pellets. They've had the small version, the mini version, doesn't really matter. I mean, you can even buy the big version and just break it up into smaller bits. Um, so I thought I'd just get some of these because you may have seen from some of our previous videos, not only do we make like big batches of dry mix, but we also have like a cupboard full of kind of extras that we add in like, um, things that are heavily fragranced like uh, star anise and cinnamon and uh, cloves and stuff like that. We don't put that in the dry mix because it makes it smell kind of weird. So we have all these other extra bits and pieces that we can add as well as the dry mix in the evening meal. And one of those things is probably gonna be the pellets. I have put the pellets in the dry mix before, but I think we might keep them separate this time just to change things up. So a couple of old favorites now. These are toys that I bought for chip and fish when they were little babies. And I bought them quite a few times, but I haven't bought them recently, which is, Bizarre. I've been trying some of the other different things out. So we've gone back to them now, the old favorites. So this one is called uh, Willow Wizard Hanging Parrot Toy. Um, again, chip and fish love this. They love pulling this up. If I put it underneath a perch, they'll hold the bits up and they'll play with them. I do always take off the acrylic star. I normally just like snap it off because we don't like to have plastic in the cages. Um, but this is a firm favorite and it's all like sisal rope as well. So yeah, I've bought this quite a few times and now I've got another one. And the other toy is called a uh, vine ball tree hanging parrot toy. And again, bought this loads of times. Jim Fish have loved it, so it'll be interesting to see what the other birds think. And you know what I'm gonna say, <laughs> you'll probably hear it. We're taking the bell off. I've talked about bells all the time on my channel. Uh, they are not that safe for birds. If the clapper comes off and they swallow it, you're gonna have a lot of problems. Lots of them, especially the colored ones, are made of toxic materials um, and a lot of the time they also overstimulate your birds, make them hormonal, and they just don't really need them. If you do want to offer any kind of like noise enrichment, you could offer like stainless steel measuring cups hung up in the cage, 
but bells uh, just really are not worth offering to your birds you can pretty much always just kind of cut them off with like wire cutters or something um, but yeah the rest of the toy is lovely and I know it's going to be uh, very popular with the birds there's little lolly sticks and things on there so that's going to be a lot of fun too and the last two things I got from Northern Parrots firstly this is another new one this is cardboard treat block platform parrot perch it's essentially just a block of cardboard uh, that's corrugated that you could hide treats in if you want to and this is really awesome we are going to put this in chip and fish's cage because they currently have this amazing flat uh, cork perch uh, which one of my patrons veronica very kindly sent to us from canada and it's kind of hard to get in the uk a lot of the cork is a bit uh sketchy so i haven't found a source that i'm confident to use with the birds especially not in perch form i would have to put the fixings on myself but this can go in place because they really have gone to town on it. It's hanging on by a thread. Um, so this can go in place and they can have another platform perch that's different to the other ones they already have that they can chew and stuff like that. And then with the remaining part of the cork, I'll probably just um, cut it up into pieces and like put it into a toy so they can continue to enjoy it. And the other thing that we got, which I've already opened because I had to use them, are nature berries. And these are the, what is it like, the tropical one? Um, so nutri berries, we don't feed these very often. They have sugar in them. They are not what you would consider a healthy parrot food. Why are we using these, you may ask? Well, <laughs> Kipling and Louis, um, they are a bundle of fun, but they can be a bit of a challenge getting back in the cage. And we're working on lots of different things with them at the moment. So we are not strictly working on a kind of set behavior of them going in the cage. We've got other things that we need to prioritize. But the way that they have been going in the cage consistently is if I put a Nutriberry in the cage on the top platform perch, Kipling will go in and start chewing it and then I'll step to one side and then Louis will kind of see that Kipling's got something, get a bit like, ah, oh, I want that too, and then he'll take himself inside. So that works. And I've also been breaking them up into like halves so they're not having as much when they are going back in. Very occasionally the rest of the birds will also have one just for like a special extra treat um, but this is not something that we feed regularly again you know always check the ingredients on anything you're feeding but this is working for us for the moment with getting the birds in the cage and that's what's important to us at the moment while we work on other more important behaviors so next up i'm going to show you the things i got from polly's natural parrot boutique again this is a shop that we love i buy from all the time and she's just got amazing products on there so the first one is one of her brand new toys, uh, which I was really excited about when I first saw it, and that is the floral basket. Now this is an amazing like straw wicker basket, and it has straw flowers in and a uh, Corolla rose, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, but this looks like an absolute load of fun. You could put a piece of string on here and tie it up in the cage. They could have it on the floor. I think with our guys, we might have it for like out of cage time, so I can see who likes it, who's not quite sure about it, and where it would be best to kind of put. Again, I think Kipling is probably gonna like this quite a lot, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. But this is such a fun toy and it's natural. It's what we like to see. Um, you know, we're all about those natural materials when we're offering toys to our birds. So yeah, this was really cool when I saw it and um, I'm really excited to give it a go. Next up is the rose meal topper. Again, I've lost count of how many times I've bought this. Um, this is like one of the staples for my dry mix because there are so many different ingredients in here. One of the favorite ingredients in here of mine is the spearmint because it makes it smell absolutely amazing. I'll have to just give it a little sniff <laughs> over the packet, um, but it makes the dry mix smell amazing too. So I always try and include this into my dry mixes. Um, and again, the great thing about this is there's so many different ingredients in just this one little package because I completely understand that creating dry mixes for your birds can be costly. I mean, I didn't actually cost up how much I've spent on this one. Again, we have seven birds, but it can add up. So if you can buy products like this where you get uh, you pay one price and you've got loads of different ingredients just in this one packet it's a lot easier to get that variety whereas obviously if you're buying things individually sometimes the cost can add up so it all depends on your budget but i still include this as well as buying individual ingredients because i really like it and um, there's just lots of things in here again another one i've bought so many different times is the simply floral forage tray which i can never say but i managed it at that time and this is packed full of loads of different flowers uh, the two favorites of my birds are probably the blue corn flowers i love those i love how they look uh, scampi's always shredding them and also the rose buds themselves again scampi is like a flower connoisseur he just loves it <laughs> when i unpacked this just he ran over to this i hadn't even obviously taken the wrapper off and he started trying to get the rose buds out which is adorable so um yeah flowers are a huge 
huge hit with the birds. Always just be careful where you're sourcing them from, but everything from Polly's is perfectly safe, which is why I always go back to buying from her. And this is just lots of fun. Again, lots of variety in there, which we love to see. Now, Polly's actually released a new kind of forage tray as well called Blooming Garden, which has loads of different flowers. I'm gonna see if the camera wants to focus. There's loads of color in there, lots of different things in there. And again, I think this is gonna be a big hit with the birds. I always love trying new ingredients, especially when I know they're bird safe. Uh, always make sure that you check multiple lists or ask me or whatever if you want to try something with your birds because you just wanna make sure that everything is A-OK. -okay. But again, lots of color in here. Another thing that we like to encourage is adding lots of color to our bird's diet because they have an amazing um, color vision. So why not play into that as well with something tasty too? So yeah, I think they're gonna be very, very happy with trying out all of these lovely flowers. And the last two things I have are two more uh, different flowers. So I've got some Corolla Rose uh, rose petals that I can add in separate. I do have lots of rose, but again, I've got lots of other ingredients so I can kind of mix them up and, and add it up and make lots of different variety. I think I'll probably keep these separate to the dry mix so we can add them separately because there is a lot of rose going in there already. And this one, which I was really excited about, which are chrysanthemums. Uh, again, I've not seen these for um, parrots and these are obviously you know, perfectly edible and that kind of thing. And they're a beautiful flower. So um, it's just nice to get that color and that variety. And yeah, it's just really awesome to have a different kind of flower to add to their diet. So that brings me to the end of my little shopping spree. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the products. Uh, I have a link to Northern Parrots down in my description. It is an affiliate link if you'd like to use it. If you don't want to use it, it's totally fine. It's completely up to you. But uh, I'll have a link to Polly's as well, so you can go and check out the products. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing week. Let me know how you're doing down in the comments, how your birds are, what's been going on, because I would love to speak to you. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Take care and see you later.